So uh, this example is going to be our first truss example using method of joints. Okay, so we're going to jump right into it. And in this example, we're going to use method of joints to compute the member forces, okay? So in this example, we're gonna have what's called a three bar truss, okay? So we're gonna have um, a truss with exactly what it sounds like, three bars or three members. And it'll look something like this. Now remember a truss typically has straight members, so all these should be straight linear segments. In the bottom left corner, we're gonna have a uh, external pin support. In the bottom right corner, we're gonna have a roller support. And then up at the top, we're gonna have a point load of two kips. So we're gonna call uh, the bottom left support A, we'll call the roller B, and then we're gonna call the, the uh, joint up at the top C. It doesn't really matter what you call them, just label them appropriately. Member AB is gonna be three feet long, and then member AC is gonna be four feet long. All right, so this is our truss right here. Um, before we actually start doing the computations, I like to point out a few uh, geometric um, you know, facts about this truss. So first we notice that there are three joints, okay? There's A, B, and C. So I like to emphasize that um, even though you do have an external support reaction, a pin at A, and a roller at B, those are still considered joints as well. So we have three joints. We also have three members, three members. So we have member AB, BC, and AC, okay? So, um, so that's just a little bit of background information. Now, the next thing I wanna point out is can we solve for external support reactions? And then followed by, do we have to solve for external support reactions before we start this problem? So let's ask those questions. Can we solve for the external support reactions, which of course are a Y, A X, and B Y. Uh, before beginning the analysis. So uh, let's let's think about that question. Can we solve for these external support reactions first? Well, the answer is yes because the entire truss is a rigid body in which some of the forces in the x direction equals zero, some of the forces in the y direction equals zero, and some of the moments about some point O equals zero are valid, okay? So yes, we can solve for them, okay? Now, the follow-up question is, do we have to solve for them first? So follow-up, do we have to solve for external support reactions at the beginning of the analysis. 
Now the answer to that question actually is no. And the reason why is because we can begin the method of joints analysis at joint C, which has the one known force of two kips and the two unknown forces of FAC and FBC. So notice that if we look at joint C, what's happening at joint C? Well, we have one known force being applied at C, and then we have two unknown forces being uh, acting at C, the force in member AC and the force in member BC, okay? So two unknown forces, FAC and FBC. So remember, uh, if you watch the previous video like you should have and you have your notes out from our previous video's background information, you always have to begin at a joint where you have at least one known force and at most two unknown forces. And the reason why that you can only have up to two unknown forces is because a joint is treated as a particle, right? And it is subject to particle equilibrium equations, which are some of the forces in the x direction and some of the forces in the y direction. All right, so let's get started. Let's, uh, let's actually analyze this truss. Let's begin with looking at a free body diagram, FBD, of joint C, okay? Now, um, I strongly encourage you to keep your notebooks open and be referring to the background information we gave uh, in the previous video on the general procedure of how to perform this analysis, okay? Because if, you, if you're not keeping that fresh in your mind, you're going to get lost pretty quickly in this process. All right, so we're going to look at a free body diagram of joint C. There it is. And we have the applied load of two kips here, okay? Now, what else do we have at joint C? Well, we have this, this uh, force right here that we don't know, FAC. That's the force in member AC. And then we also have this force right here that we don't know, which is FBC, FBC, okay? So, so the next thing we need to know is, do we know something about the angle happening here? Well, yeah, we do. Remember, we were given dimensions, right? So when you're given dimension lines, you can build... Uh, some trigonometric ratios. So notice that these dimension lines are four feet vertical by three feet horizontal, which means that we can define this slope ratio is a four to three ratio. And then the whole triangle is considered a three, four, five triangle. So there's our directions that become useful. Now, if you also refer back to the previous video's notes, you'll find that we are assuming each of these unknown forces are acting in tension. So we are pointing them away from the joint, all right? So we'll make a little note here, all right? FAC and FBC are assumed, assumed, we'll underline, we'll underline that word, to be in tension thus pointing away from the joint, okay? Now, if we perform the calculations and one or both of these comes out to be negative, it'll turn out that it's that force that's negative is actually in compression and it would be pointing at the joint instead of away from the joint. So let's find that out right now. Let's apply our equilibrium equations. Remember, this is a particle, so we have two applicable equilibrium equations. We can say some of the forces in the x direction equals zero, 
things pointing to the right are positive. So we would have minus two kips, and then we would say plus FBC times the cosine of whatever that interior angle would be right here, the cosine of that angle, which the cosine of that angle is three fifths, okay? It's adjacent over hypotenuse, so that is three fifths. It's not cosine of three fifths. The cosine of that angle is three fifths, all right? And then we would say equals zero. So if we do a little bit of rearranging here, we can clearly see that FBC will end up being a positive number and it ends up being positive 10 over three, which I get as 3.33 kips, okay? Now, the fact that this number came out as positive indicates that it is in fact in tension, okay? It is, it is pointing away from the joint, Okay, in, in tension. Remember, pointing away from the joint indicates a tensile effect in the member. All right, so now let's move to the second equilibrium equation, which would be sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero, and we call things that are pointing up positive. So looking at this free body diagram, we would say minus FAC, and then we would say minus F. BC times the sine of that interior angle, which is four fifths equals zero. Now we know FBC, right? We know FB, we just figured it out. FBC is 3.33 kips in tension. So we're gonna plug that in right here, okay? So when we plug that in, we'll get negative FAC minus 3.33 kips times four fifths equals zero. So doing a little bit of rearranging, we actually get a negative sign here, a negative value for FAC, and we get a value of 2.67 negative, 2.67 kips negative. Now that negative indicates a couple of things, okay? First, it indicates that that vector FAC is is pointing in the opposite direction of what we assumed in this free body diagram, which means FAC is actually pointing up in this free body diagram, okay? So we can start by putting that. Now, more so, that negative indicates that FAC is in compression, okay? So another way to write this is FAC is 2.67 kips, and we're gonna put a little C for compression in parentheses there, okay? Now, one thing I want you to notice, if you decide to put the C for compression here, which is what I would like you to do, you do not also put the negative there. That would be like saying a negative of a negative, okay? So you either put negative 2.67 or you put 2.67 with a little C for compression out next to it. That is what I prefer you to do is to indicate compression or tension like we saw with the other member. Okay, now before I move on, I wanna point out something. I wanna ask you, and I want you to think about this, think about it hard. How many sign conventions are happening here, okay? We actually have two different sign conventions that are working together, they're working in tandem. One sign convention has to do with what we are calling tension, okay? So in regards to tension versus compression, we call vectors pointing away from a joint tensile, okay? And we often call tensile effects quote unquote positive, and therefore the opposite would be compression, so compressive effects are called negative. So that, that is one sign convention. The second sign convention that is separate but it's working in tandem with the first one I just described is the directionality of what we call positive or negative, which is indicated by the symbols around our equilibrium equations. So when something points to the right 
in a mathematical equation, we call it positive. And when something points up in a mathematical equation, we call that positive. That's why FAC and FBC in this equation have negatives in front of them. Because in our free body diagram, we determined that they were pointing down, okay? So from a direction point of view, when something's pointing down, you call it negative in your equilibrium equations. However, from a tension and compression point of view, if something is pointing away from the joint, no matter what direction, if it's just pointing away, we call that tension and we typically call things in tension positive. So, so remember, we're not just dealing with one sign convention right now. We're dealing with two sign conventions that are working together. And as we do more examples moving forward, we're gonna see this executed more and more. So let's, let's move on and get back uh, on track with this example. So are we done? Well, no, no, but we got a nice little chunk done. So what I like to do is I like to put a little check mark by the members once I've figured them out. Uh, so when you get to more complicated trusses, you'll see that that's quite handy. So the last member we need to figure out the force of is member AB. Okay, so the question is, what should I do to move down somewhere and get the force of member AB? Well, remember, you need to move to a joint that has at least one known force and at most two unknown forces. Okay, so which joint should we move to? Should we move to A next? Well, if you say we need to move to A, you're going to be wrong, okay? How many unknown forces are happening at A? Three. Take a second and think about that. What would be the three unknown forces happening at A? Well, A is a pin. So an external pin has two reactions, an AX and an AY. There's two unknowns right there. And then the force in AB, which we could call FAB, is also unknown at this time. So there's three unknowns right there. We cannot move to A, but what we can do is we can move to B, okay? How many unknowns do we have at B? Well, we only have two unknowns. We have BY, and then we have FAB again, okay? Two unknowns. And then the one, un the one known we have is the force in BC. So I'm going to make a note of that down here. I'm going to say next... We're going to move to joint B since there are only two unknowns at B, which what are those again? That would be BY and FAB. And there is one known force at B, which is what? Well, that would be FBC, right? FBC, this, this guy, right? We just calculated it. It's, it used to be unknown, but we figured it out. 3.33 kips, right? So we'll say FBC. Okay, now we want to make a note here. We cannot move to A at this time since there are three unknowns at A. All right, so I'm going to move down to B. I'm going to say free body diagram of joint B. Okay, so when we draw joint B, here it is, joint B. Here's one of the unknowns, BY. That's an external reaction. We don't know it now. We could have figured it out earlier at the beginning of the problem. We talked about that, uh, but we didn't need to, and we still don't need to. We have FAB here, which we don't know. And we have a force coming in right here. Now, that force is FBC, and we know that that's 3.33 kips because we figured it out earlier. 
Now, my question is what direction is this force pointing? Is it pointing at joint B or away from joint B? Well, let's look at the previous free body diagram and see if we can figure it out. When we looked at a free body diagram of joint C, we figured out that FBC came out to be positive. We assumed it was pointing away from the joint. It came out positive. So it is in fact pointing away from the joint at C, thus being in tension, okay? So if you go to the opposite side of that member, the opposite side of BC, you'll be at joint C, okay? Which means that from joint C's perspective, that force should be pointing, you guessed it, away from joint C, okay? Away from joint C. And again, what, is, what does it mean when a force is pointing away from a joint? It's, it's a tensile force, as we calculated earlier, okay? So what, is, what are the dimensions here? Well, it's still a four to three ratio, so a three, four, five triangle is formed. And so what do we need to solve for? Well, we just need FAB right here, okay? So if we only need FAB, What's the equilibrium equation we need to apply? Is it some of the forces in the y direction? No, it would be some of the forces in the x direction equals zero. And we apply that because FAB is in the x direction, of course. And so we would end up saying negative 3.33 kips times the cosine of that interior angle, which is adjacent over hypotenuse, so 3 fifths, and then minus FAB equals zero. And if we do some rearranging right here, you should end up getting a negative two kips. And that negative indicates compression, okay? So FAB is actually two kips in compression, which means that FAB is actually pointing to the right in this free body diagram. It's actually pointing to the right in this free body diagram. Now, again, I like to reemphasize my information on the sign convention. Remember, two sign conventions are happening simultaneously. One of them describes tension versus compression, okay? The other sign convention that's happening in tandem is what we call positive and negative based on the direction, okay? So things pointing to the left would be negative because here, if we point to the right, it's positive. So that's why we have negatives attached in here. We performed some calculations. FAB was computed as a numerically negative value. So it's pointing in the opposite direction that we assumed, pointing to the right, which indicates compression. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna summarize my values, and then I'm gonna draw a free body diagram of all of the members next to each other so we can see kind of the big picture here, okay? So we're gonna say summary, and our summary is gonna include FAB, which we computed as two kips in compression, and then it's gonna include uh, FBC, which was 3.33 kips in tension. And then our other value was FAC was 2.67 kips in compression. FAC 2.67 kips in compression. And then a free body diagram of all members would look something like this. We would have joint C up here, and we have that two kips pointing at joint C. And so, so we'll label that joint C. And then AC, the force in AC is gonna be right here, okay? And it was in compression, which means it should be pointing at the joint, okay? So this right here is our 2.67 kips. Now what about the force in BC. Well, we said that was 3.33 kips in tension. So that's about right here, 3.33 kips. Tension means it's pointing away from the joint. Okay, now I'm gonna come way down here. I'm, gonna, I'm spreading these out on purpose so um, you can see some, something interesting here in a minute. We come all the way down here, here's A, okay? 
Now, what's happening down at A? Well, we we do have we do have an AY and an AX that remember, did we actually solve for these? No. We could have, but we did not. All right. Now, if we're down at A, what direction do you think this 2.67 kip should be pointing? Well, down at A, it should be pointing at A, 2.67 kips. Okay, should be at A. Notice that the member that is connected to A and C should maintain the same force, 2.67 kips, but pointing in opposite directions with respect to A and C. Okay, that indicates static equilibrium. Now, we said that this indicates compression. So you may be wondering, stay with me here, you may be wondering how in the world does this mean compression? If this is, if I kind of like stick our, our member in here, and I say like this is our member here, let me, let me rearrange this just a little bit. just so uh, we can create a little bit more space here. So how in the world is this, is this in compression? Oops, there we go. How in the world is this in compression? I mean, it looks like I have these two vectors pulling, pulling on the member, right? Well, remember, from the member's perspective, you also have to draw vectors acting on the member. So check that out, okay? So at this specific point, at that connection point, from point C's perspective, the 2.67 is pointing at C. And from the member's perspective, the 2.67 kips has to be pointing at that part of the member equal and opposite direction. So take a look at this member right here. Look at that, what do you see? It's in compression, okay? Now let's move down all the way over here. I'm gonna draw this real big. All the way over here. Right there about. This is point B. And again, we had a BY here that we could have found, but we didn't really have to, okay? And what is the 3.33 kips doing from B's perspective, right? The force in BC. Well, 3.33 kips in tension, so it was shown that it was pointing away, right? 3.33 kips, no question. Well, let's stick the member in there. Let's stick the member in there. If we say that here's the member, Okay, I know you, you all love my artwork. Okay. From the member's perspective, let me just draw that member better. That looks horrible. I was never meant to be an artist. Okay, that's a little better. So from the member's perspective, what should the member be experiencing? Well, we should have a force coming out from each direction just like that, okay? And then, of course, I can move this three kips and place it right there. So check out this member. This member right here is, it's even drawn in a, com in a uh, tensile state right now, okay? So that's the way you can think of it even though it may at first seem like, oh, this force 3.33 is pointing at the member, but if you look at the member from barely the opposite side, then the force is equal and opposite, okay? And then uh, a similar thing can be, can be um, shown here. So what was AB? AB was two kips in compression. Almost drew that wrong two kips in compression. So right here, right here, there's our two kips. There's our two kips. And then if we draw a little piece of the member there, then we should see something like that. 
and check that out. This member is in compression, okay? So at every point you look at this, we have forces that are balanced, okay? So um, this is just kind of a way to maybe help you visualize the directionality in this. But our final answers really are these values right here, okay?